Hey guys, it's Cliff again. Gonna make another short unit here, getting toward the end of possible fire attacks for a sense of completion. I wanna talk a bit about off-board artillery. Now, this isn't something that you're going to really direct. It's more or less something that happens to you. In the game, <clears throat> as it's written, volumes one and volume two, you don't get to call in arty strikes on your own. Ross has entrusted us with a forward observer or a radio yet, perhaps in the future. I mean, I've messed around with this with home rules, and I know other people have too. Seems like it'd be fun to have a forward observer be able to call in some arty strikes as the Germans try to lumber across some open terrain. But as it is, if you're going to get artillery on the board, it's going to be as a result of a random event, usually. You're going to draw an event card, roll your random event, and you're going to end up drawing in some artillery friendly or not. And both of them can hurt. So the artillery, let's see, that's Alt F7, I think, for indirect fire. Let's see, click on the board. Yeah, indirect fire comes in <clears throat> three calibers for the U.S., two for the Germans. The U.S. has 60 millimeter mortars, probably just attached to the company with the heavy weapon team. I mean, Ross gave us the M1919s out of that heavy weapon platoon, but he didn't give us our 60 mil mortar, mortar team. Hmm. Or you get battalion with 81 millimeter mortars, which the Germans also have, and then the 105s, no 150s, thank goodness. 105 is bad enough. So when you draw these, you'll usually roll a die to see how many incoming shells there are. Let's just do one for the heck of it. And you got your 105s here and your 81s and your 60s. There's no max range because, well, these boards are small, less than 20 acres. You see we got damage rolls, which is the number of die you're going to roll, and frag is the to hit number. They may or may not be able to cause a crater, so 60s are too wimpy to cause a crater. 81s can crater on a 2 on a 10-sided die. And they can rubble buildings, so 60 is not going to rubble a building, neither is a grenade. But an 81 can, and a 105 definitely can. And you notice there's a fraction again here, like the grenade near, grenade far. Well, the numerator, the top of these fractions, is for the hex that struck. And the denominator the bottom of the fraction, is for each of the surrounding hexes, if there's anybody in it, because the 105 throws out enough frags that they can cover, you know, a good 30 meter diameter. So it can cover those seven hexes with some goodness. And you can see that they throw different amounts of smoke. They can also create fires. They're going to have a fire roll. I'm going to talk about smoke and fire in the next video. I'll mention cratering in this one. So we'll just cover cratering and the fragmentation effects in this video. The next one I'm going to cover smoke in all the ways that smoke can be generated, how we resolve all those smokes, and then also fire can be generated in fire. Where there's smoke there's fire sometimes. All right. So, let's see here. I think let's just do a 105 strike because it's the most complicated because it can affect the most hexes. And let's say that it's the Germans being struck because I don't feel like eating any artillery today myself. So, let's Alt E to get up the enemies. Let's put some fun guys down here. I think about four guys out of blue will do. Do I have them all down? No, I got two down and I dropped two somewhere else. Two are off in the nether regions. 
I got four guys. Let's say they're all clustered up here. Fools. There we are. And I want to give these two guys evades. And give these two guys aim fires. And I take all their moves off. Because I like it clean. Let's say we've got our compass here. And we draw a random event. And it drops an arty shell on 1709 and it's at 105. So we have to go to indirect fire. This bigger. And we've got a friendly 105 how it's around. You see here they are friendly 60s, friendly 81s, friendly 105s, enemy 81s, enemy 105s. And we dropped it on 1709. Now you have to roll for scatter. So you roll a 6, a d6. You got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now I'm going to say that my roll is 5 for this example, but I would just roll. This would be a 1. Usually they go off in a direction you don't like. But I'm going to force things to work today. So let's say I rolled a 5. I'll roll until I get 1. There, there it is. And then you roll another for distance. It'll tell you how much to scatter. Usually in the chart, like if I go up to, that's vehicles. I don't want a vehicle. I go up to, forgotten where they are, here. Friendly event defending. So here's where we would find our artillery attack. There's a 60, here's an 81, here's a 105. You roll a d10, it tells you what hex to put it in. I said for instance it went into 1709 on this one even though it's not on this table. And it says to scatter 1d6. What that means is you roll 1d6 to see what direction it went and then you roll 1d6 for the distance that it goes. So no matter what, when they tell you to scatter, you're going to roll a d6 for direction. And then it said 1d6 for distance, and I want it to be a 4. And it's a 4. Look at that. So direction 5, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I guess for the intent and purposes of this video, I'm going to move this guy up so I can talk about this. There we go. I'm going to put him underneath. Put this guy on top. Then he'll center. I like things centered. Okay. Then you resolve these artillery attacks immediately. So this happens as an event right in the middle of your turn. It usually makes me forget everything I'm doing at the time. So I usually have to write down what I'm doing or I'll forget where I was. Because this totally disrupts me. Just like Combat Commander, you have all these disruptions. It's hard to remember where you were. Well, at least I have a hard time. So we have to resolve this. This is a 105. And it affects the hex and all the surrounding hexes. So the first thing we do is, well, it's coming in. We have to pull in our chart. There's our indirect. I'll move it over here. We got somebody in the hex here. So he's evading in the open. Let's see where these guys are. Everybody's in the open except 1210. He's in the woods. Evading in the open. I'm in the hex. So it's five shots for five. I'm evading in the open. So that makes five shots for four. Because evading in the open, and the order chart, evading in the open is a minus one. So you use that order and terrain chart. So it's five shots for four for being in the open. You just roll it. One, two, three, four. Two hits. We'd have to resolve two hits against him. Plus he has to make a morale check at the end, just like a grenade attack. 
<coughs> the adjacent hexes use the denominator two shots for three aim fire in the trees is minus two so that's two shots for one one zero he gets two hits and has to do a morale check besides aim fire in the open that is aim fire in the open is a zero so that's two shots for three missed him still has to do a morale check and this guy evading the opens minus one two shots for two one hit so we got two hits two hits one hit we had to put a pretty good hurt on with this artillery and he has to do a morale check as well I'm not going to resolve all those attacks because I'm going to talk about how to resolve attacks in a future video I can only talk about so many things at once we will play smoke in this hex so I place a smoke we also have a chance to rubble if it's a building it's not a building so then if you don't rubble you can have a chance for a crater four or less for a crater five no crater and there's also a chance for fire there's a kindling rule we'll, we'll talk about in the next video in the open you can't start a fire so fire is not a deal here I'll talk about that next time with smoke and fire but really this is the essence of what's going on with artillery you place the markers where they tell you to place them well you're gonna draw an event card roll the die and you say oh crap it's an artillery strike you roll a die to determine how many so in our friendly defending here roll a d6 that'll tell you how many one to six strikes I say let's we just roll a one then you roll a d10 to determine the hex position roll a d6 to get your direction another d6 for distance and then resolve the attack using the indirect fire support card taking into account the order and terrain for any soldiers that are affected if any then roll for possible cratering or rubble and place a smoke next time I'll talk about fire now if you get an artillery attack and it rubbles a building you see there's no chance to rubble the adjacent I guess you could roll a zero on a zero you could rubble it if you rubble a building if you struck here and you rolled the rubble four for rubble any soldiers within that hex are KIA immediately rubble takes out everybody so if you rubble a building and there was a machine gun team in there you're gonna get both of the machine gunners and knock that team right out never works out that way never works out that way usually my artillery wanders off into the nether regions and blows up random bushes I rarely have artillery do much damage to the enemy which is sort of ironic because most of the casualties in World War II are attributable to artillery attacks and not small arms fire but uh, artillery in this game tends to be more of a nuisance than a good offensive weapon just doesn't dial in very well what are you going to do so really that is the essence of how to play with artillery in this game it's just follow the procedures like a big grenade it's going to be drawn in by a random event and resolved this way you are have to deal with those smokes once they're down that's usually more of a hindrance than anything the big bang usually doesn't hurt very many people smoke can get in the way man well smoke gets in your eyes that's enough for tonight I'm gonna to put this one in the can hopefully tomorrow I can get around to smoke and fires because I want to get through this series finally we're getting close to 20 we'll get there before the end of the year I'll talk to you next time later